all right what's good people back with another video and today i want to talk about a few things that's going on in the falcons organization if you haven't already go ahead and check out the rest of the content that i've been putting up lately also if you like what you see just hit the like button subscribe button and share this video let other people under the falcons organization or the falcon fan base know what we're doing over here all right let's go ahead and get into this all right, there's been reports that Arthur Smith, coach of the Atlanta Falcons, saying that he is not, I repeat, he is not trying to rebuild his team. He is in the process of actually trying to win now with the pieces that he have now. Also, he's trying to add and subtract whatever he needs to fit his mold and whatever he wants in on this team. I... I'm a little torn about this because I, I kind of knew it wasn't going to be a rebuild, like I stated before, that they were saying that they're not necessarily trying to break off everything that was about this team. They're trying to win with what they have. And it's uh kind of like the same old, same old that we've been seeing for the past few years for the Falcons. They're trying to win with what they have, and it just kept coming up short, whether it be the wrong play calling, whether it be just the personnel on the field, or, you know, it, it's just a little bit of everything. Now, with this new regime, uh, I, I don't want to give them a pass, but I do want to give them time to actually put a product out on the field of their vi with their vision in place and see where it goes. But I'm getting to the point where I'm, I'm kind of tired of hearing it. I want to see it. So, therefore, <clears throat> I, I kind of have no choice but to wait and see. But I don't, I don't necessarily like to hear that because um, – I don't want to get stuck in the ways of just saying, hey, we're just going to win with what we have and just try to add a few pieces where we know a lot of these old pieces just haven't been adding up. So but at the same time, I do want to see what they going to what they can get out of them. So I'm like I said, I'm kind of torn. So uh, maybe there's something there because I still think that Matt Ryan has something left in the tank. I still love Julio Jones. But I know Julio is rarely on the field most of the time. And when he's on the field, he's an impact. But most of the time, he's doubled or tripled or just being a decoy. And, you know, he gets a lot of yards, but he's not putting points up on the board. And um, it, it's, it's good to see, but it's, you know, we want we need touchdowns. We really need touchdowns on offense. And as far as defense, I mean, where do you start there? I mean, it's just been all over the place on defense with some bad play calling and uh, the personnel just have been sitting right. Keon O'Neal was hurt. Uh, you had um, the other free safety. He was hurt as well. We, we just have not been able to stop anyone on defense. So it, it, it's, it's all over the place of how I feel about that statement with him saying that he does not want to necessarily rebuild. And um, like I said, I'm back and forth with it. I really honestly don't know how I feel about that. All right, Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst, his contract, his fifth year option has been declined by the Falcons and uh, it kind of, I'm, I'm not too worried about it because we have Kyle Pitts. I know we like to run. Uh, I know that this new regime like to run a double tight end set and that double tight end set will be work perfect for Hayden Hurst and Kyle Pitts. Even if Kyle Pitts is not necessarily playing full time uh, tight end. I want to know if this is going to be a money issue. I mean, I think he's 27. He'll be 28 by the time he's um, out of the door. Um, he's still going to be sought after. Maybe the money is not going to be there for them, uh, for them to, uh, to sign him. So I, I kind of get it on the money side. But, I mean, Hayden Hurst is, is, is a pretty good talent. You, you would like to try to keep him around. I don't even know what the money is looking like next year because we're still working on the, the money for this year. So, I'm not really sure what they're doing over there. Maybe, you know, they know something that uh, that we don't. I mean, obviously they do. I mean, they're in the front office. Um, but I, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how that, how that plays out. Uh, maybe that will change at the end of the year. Maybe they will end up signing him after they're just declining the fifth-year option. Now he's still going to be playing to the end of the year. Maybe they see something different at the time. But right now – uh, it's kind of interesting to see how that plays out because, um, it, you know, you, you have thought that with Hayden Hurst and Kyle Pitts, it'll fit in their scheme. Now, what I will say this, um, just as a tidbit before I get to the next uh, topic, 
um, they did uh, get the fifth year option on uh, Calvin Ridley, which almost that was like a no brainer. I can, I, I can see that because uh, you know Calvin Ridley's Calvin Ridley, and at wide receiver you would wanna you don't want to let that particular player go between him and Hayden Hurts. I mean, what what are we talking about here? So uh, I, I expect them to probably sign him long term once his fifth year option is up. Um, let's talk about running backs. You know, um, we did not we did not draft a running back. Uh, everybody wanted to draft a running back. I wanted them to get Javante Williams out of North Carolina. I know there was another uh, running back. Um, Kenny Gainwell was another one that I, I actually liked. And Puka Williams was another one. So those are three running backs that I was thinking that uh, the Falcons could pick up throughout the draft. They stood pat. They did not get. They did not pick up a, a, a running back at all throughout the draft. They did pick up one uh, uh, as an undrafted free agent. We'll get into that in a second. But why is nobody talking about Quadri Allison? Nobody has talked about this kid at all. I mean, I'm not saying that. I, I mean, I don't even know if he's good or not, or whatever the case may be. I think he only had one carry this past season. He's six one, two thirty. I mean, he's a, I mean, he's a big running back, and nobody has talked about him. Hey, I'm even guilty of it. I haven't even talked about him. I don't even know. Uh, I, I almost just forgot about him. Just something just told me, you know, whatever happened to this kid? Like, between him and Mike Davis, are these guys going to be able to carry the load on what they can do in the backfield? Uh it's going to be interesting. I've seen Mike Davis play. Mike Davis can catch out the backfield a little bit. He can run pretty tough. He doesn't have that, excuse me, he doesn't have that much tread on, I mean, I mean, he hasn't lo- lost a lot of tread on his tires, so he's good to go. Same thing with Quadri Allison. Allison only had one carry last year, and I think he had like five the last, you know, I think he had like five carries last year or something like, I mean, the year before or something like that. Uh, I take that back. He had 22 carries in 2019, and he had one carry in 2020. It, it I, I don't know if it's an injury issue or whatever the case may be. I have no idea because uh, I, I you know, like I said, I forgot about him. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going on with him and uh, him and Mike Davis. Also, we have we did sign another running back, undrafted free agent out of Louisville, Javian Hawkins, five nine one ninety six out of uh louisville um i looked at some of his uh clips he's a pretty good zone um he's a zone style running back more like a one back type guy you know you can get him out in a um in a uh, long uh stretch running game i think he i think he's a good change of pace overall you know we don't have Edo smith anymore so it's gonna be uh pretty much hopefully i don't know because he's undrafted free agent we don't know if he's gonna stay with the team but you know, you got Hawkins, you got Quadri Allison, you got Mike Davis. You got three guys there that, you know, at the end of the day, when you look at the rookies and you look at these guys, these are guys are pro- pretty much like veterans with, you know, very um, rookie-style t- exposure. I mean, outside of Hawkins. I mean, Mike Davis haven't ran the ball that much. I mean, he's been po- popping around over here and there and other teams or whatever, but he rarely got a chance. It's like he's going to get a chance in Atlanta. Quadri Allison is another one. He has only ran the ball. He, he ran the ball under 25 times his entire career. I Like I said, I don't know if it's an injury issue. From what I see, I don't see anything that is an injury issue. It just seems like he just has not gotten anything, you know, going for um for his career. I, I don't know. I mean, is it – it doesn't say anything about him being injured or whatever the case may be. So, I think this is – at the end of the day, I, I – I think this, if they do decide to go this route, it may be a win for us, and we haven't even looked at it. I mean, Quadri Allison is is basically the uh, a style of running back that they've been that they ran in uh, Tennessee. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's not. I mean, we all know he's not. Uh, oh, what's his name? Oh, I just lost. I lost train of thought. Um, Derrick Henry. He's not a. He's not Derrick Henry, obviously, but he does have that size. I mean, I mean, he, I mean, six two to I mean six one two thirty, and I think Henry is like what six two two thirty five two forty. I mean, I don't even think he's going to be able to be that caliber running back, but he does fit the scheme and the style of running the ball. Mike Davis is another one. He's a little, a little bit in between. 
kind of still of a bruiser, so that'll be work work out as well. Now with um, Javion Hawkins, Javion Hawkins can I, I don't know if he can catch the ball out the backfield. I'm pretty sure he can. Little small scat back, actually can run pretty well, pretty fast. So, is it a big thing that we did not draft a running back? Um, more the more I think about it now, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think that we'll be all right in that area. The main thing is though, we need the blocking up front for these guys to run through the um run through the gaps. If we can get that, then w there's no discussion. So it's a lot of things going on here in, in Atlanta. You know, as far as the you know the team, it's a lot going on. I don't expect anything big time right away. I know somebody was talk that I was talking to saying they want the Super Bowl in three years. Hey, I'm not against that. I'm not against that at all because we've seen teams with a new regime come in or new players come in or a new scheme fit comes in and they have success right away. Hey, you got to think about it. Atlanta was like that from 2008, 2009, 2010. You know, 2000, you know, 2009 to 2012. I mean, that's a span of four, three to four years. And we were able to at least get to the NFC Championship game, so it it is it, really is possible, and it, it we just you know have to see if these guys could put this you know this team in place to be successful. So we're going to look into that. We're going to see all of that. Uh, if you made it this far, man, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys once again. Uh, we're all talking about Falcons over here. I also try to talk about a little bit of Georgia Southern football. I will be making a video on that later on. I I just been a little busy. Haven't been able to make that one yet because I have a few things to say about that as well. Like I said, if you like what you see, like, subscribe, comment, share this with the organization and with the people that are Falcon fans as well. Because I would like to have a discussion with the uh, with you guys about this team throughout the year and as long as i make this content so i hope you guys take it easy you guys be blessed and i'll see you guys next time peace